All right, to discuss this further, for more, we are being joined by retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel L. Davis from Sterling, Virginia. He is a military expert and senior fellow for defense priorities. Always a pleasure to have you on the broadcast here with us, sir. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Right. Sir, the skirmish that we've seen now, this time it's been over Syria. Is it just a nudge from Russia to the U.S.? Or how should it be seen in context with the conflict that the two nations are already embroiled in at the moment? You know, this is really just kind of the tip of the iceberg. And just the latest uh, that's, that's made international news, but it's not the only one. In fact, there's been a lot of activity. Uh, of course, the world was uh, really kind of taken by a surprise and paid a lot of attention in March of this year when Russian fighters actually helped down uh, a U.S. Uh, drone in the Black Sea, near, operating not far from Crimea. Well, simultaneous with that, and it now looks like part of a, a growing pattern, also in the month of March, according to Pentagon officials, there has been a dramatic increase in the amount of this kind of behavior from the Russian Air Force, uh, of both of manned and unmanned aerial vehicles of the United States in Syria. In fact, about three weeks ago, the United States sent an, a, a complete uh, squadron of F-22 Raptors as a show of force to show that we were serious about this. And yet you see by today's events that it has no impact. And now Russia continues to have these harassing views. One general saying that a lot of these engagements were like the Russians wanted to have a dogfight with the Americans. So there is a lot of concern that we should have here because these things, any one of them could accidentally spiral out of control. Uh, uh, you know, you get manned aircraft actually, you know, coming into contact with one another, God forbid, actually engaging one another. And we have a whole new ball game if that happens. Right, sir. In fact, I was just going to come to this. You mentioned the March incident as well. There seems to be a constant interference with America's operations in international space. So how should one perceive this development? I, I think that this is Russia saying, look, we're tired of, of that, you know, all the support that you're giving to our mortal enemy in Ukraine that's resulting in Russian soldiers being killed and Russian airplanes being knocked out of the sky. And I think that they're starting to say, hey, we're going to push back here and make things uncomfortable for you and, and make us wonder, are, are we going to get into a, an aerial conflict with Russia? And, and the more aggressive they get this, the, we, we just can't uh, deny the possibility that at some point they decided to actually fire on American aircraft as a warning or or any kind of other miscalculation. Uh, but many things are possible and it's really unclear what Russia's real intent is. But one thing is very clear is that they are intentionally taking these provocative actions and uh, we have to be very, very careful this doesn't get escalated. Uh, so just to take it a little further, you did, of course, mention the Ukraine angle here. I wanted to ask what kind of impact do you see this having, whether it's on Syria or in Ukraine going forward? Well, I think that, you know, in Syria, that's it's a kind of a low scale uh, operation for the United States in, in their continuing counter ISIS operations. Uh, but, you know, the, the problem is that we now have to not just worry about, you know, fighting ISIS on the ground, but also looking up in the sky and in the air to make sure that we try to deconflict Russia. And we have what has been a fairly robust and effective deconfliction communication channel with the Russians in Syria. And it's been very effective over the years. But now it appears that even in areas where we've had the deconfliction, then Russia jets come in to harass some of our planes uh, anyway. And so that, again, implies an intentionality on the Russians, but we're not clear towards what end or to what, how far they're willing to go on this. All right. Well, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Davis, thank you so much for joining us on this edition of World DNA with your insights on this. Always my pleasure. Thanks for having me.